There it goes. It's going. All right. We're trying to figure out this blurry thing here for um, why it's... Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm trying to figure it out. So hopefully this is better. This is Terry TLC Dog Grooming. And today we're going to have a little tool talk about what to use on the doodle types. Okay, let's, can we move this over? You can't even see Mr. There. So this is Jethro. And he is a Bernese Mountain Dog, crossed with a standard poodle. Wee bit. Thank you. That's my uncle's dog. I'm babysitting Finnegan. He's very nosy. Jethro doesn't care for him. Um, so, Jethro is in every eight weeks for a haircut. And we put him in, I think it's a pretty cute haircut for him. They're very, very active. So, they get into mud and muck and all kinds of things and it's nice when you can find a balance to put a put the dog in a, through a nice haircut that he doesn't have those stick legs those shaved off stick legs but yet at the same time you don't want to have so much hair that the owners torturing the dog and they're being tortured to try and and and, and brush the thing out so when you've got the proper tools in place it really really helps so this slicker brush this is a um what's it called it's a it's a miracle coat slicker brush and i got this at ren's pets depot uh there's one in oakville there's one in burlington there's one in Waterdown. you can buy it online it wasn't expensive i think it was under 12 dollars, and they come in a couple of different sizes so i've got two and i use this for specific things and this one for specific things this one is really hard and I like that because it goes in and pulls out things from um, the coat that we need, like mats. We need to get those out. And the way you hold it too, right? You're not going to hold it like this. Like, you know, it's not a grenade, right? You, just the light. A lot of people get afraid with these hard slicker brushes because they're afraid that they're going to mark up the skin and they're going to hurt the dog. Well, you won't if you use the proper gentle hand on it. The other important thing is, is that you brush backwards, right? Brushing down, that's fine. But when you brush backwards, particularly in the toes area, you're going to get mats in between each toe. And when you brush backwards, you find them. Jethro doesn't have any mats because he's in a haircut that they can maintain easily at home, fits their budget, and he's in every eight weeks to get fixed up. Okay, so you go through, right, and you think you've done a good job, and that is a good job because they do do a good job at home, and the thing is, most people are really challenged to keep their dog in this kind of shape. The next thing you want is a metal comb, and Andrea is the one that come up with the nickname for this, and it's called the lie detector, because the metal comb will detect all the little lies that you tell yourself or that your all the little lies that your equipment tells you at how well you're brushing and combing out your dog. So you always want, when you put this metal comb on your dog, you always want it to smoothly go through, right? Head to tail with no snags. If you can't go through your dog, head to tail, down the legs, down the ears, like see, he's got some mats in that ear. See, I got a lie right there. I brushed this ear out about five minutes ago, and I knew I had a snag in there. I left it on purpose for people to see. 